Hey guys, it's Dave. With the upcoming launch of Relativity's brand new Terran R rocket for the first time, I thought now would be a good time to take a deeper dive into this company. They've made a lot of splashy headlines over the past year, and I really want to see, is this a legitimate contender in the rocket industry and a legitimate competitor to Rocket Lab? Or is it just more ambition and flash without the substance? Um, before we dive into it, I do want to note that this is a publicly traded company, so we cannot yet actually invest in it ourselves, unlike Rocket Lab and some of the other names we talk about a little bit more often on the channel. But I still think it's a good idea to keep track of them from the perspective of being a competitor to Rocket Lab and the other companies we know, as well as for the day that they may eventually go public and be available to be traded on the public stock markets. Speaking of headlines, Relativity has been a very flashy company. There's been a lot of articles written about them, a lot of big exciting news items, and I just want to share with you guys some of the big headline news stories we've seen over the past year to kind of get us all on the same page before we dive deeper into the company. So let's take a look. Okay, so first off, let's take a look at how the company got started. Well, it was founded back in 2015 by Tim Ellis and Jordan Noon. These guys both went to the University of Southern California and studied aerospace engineering, which already gives them a point in my book over asterisk Chris Kemp, who actually was a software engineer. They both actually held leadership positions at the university's Rocket Propulsion Laboratory and helped launch the first student-designed rocket into orbit. While at university, both of them took internships with Blue Origin for several years to get their first industry experience. After graduating, the two went separate ways. Ellis was hired on at Blue Origin and Noon went to SpaceX to join their propulsion team. So both these guys got experience with industry heavyweights from the get-go. So fast forward a couple years, you're 25, you and your buddy from university decide you guys want to start your own rocket company. What do you do? Well, most people would probably call the bank. These two guys actually cold emailed Mark Cuban out of the blue without knowing him at all. I find it amazing that this actually worked, but Mark Cuban, the famously cutthroat investor from Shark Tank, actually wrote them a $500,000 check right away to get them going with their new company. I guess that must have been one hell of an email. <laughs> So since then, the company has raised $1.3 billion in investment from finance heavyweights like billionaire Chamath Palihapitiya, BlackRock, Fidelity, and more. Okay, so that's how they got going, but what really makes Relativity stand out from the massive crowd of space startups trying to get off the ground over the past decade? Why were these two 25-year-old friends from college able to raise $1.3 billion from some of the smartest investors in the industry? Well, the answer seems to have been 3D printing and their advanced manufacturing technology. Now, 3D printing isn't actually all that new in the rocket industry. If you follow Rocket Lab, you may know that they have famously 3D printed their Rutherford engine, which has been into orbit over 300 times. However, what makes Relativity stand out in their 3D printing efforts is that they're 3D printing the entire rocket, as opposed to just some of the smaller components, which is what is more common in the industry. They call their manufacturing facility the factory of the future, and it is centered around Stargate, the world's largest 3D printer. The company boasts zero fixed tooling, faster design iteration and part optimization, sensor and analytics driven machine learning, and real time quality control. Most rockets have traditionally been made of 100,000 parts plus, but Relativity's Stargate is able to print a rocket with just 1,000 parts. By the way, if the name Stargate sounds familiar to you, a lot of the names they use are inspired by the science fiction computer game StarCraft. Pylons, Stargate, Terran, these are all terms from the game. Not a really important point, but it does give them some nerd cred in my books. Anyway, 
According to Relativity, Stargate is able to go from raw materials to a full Terran R rocket in 60 days. Just to put this in perspective, the Terran R is planned to be significantly larger than even Rocket Lab's upcoming Neutron rocket. In terms of production for the smaller Electron rocket, we're currently looking at about 18 days per rocket and improving. Now, personally, I'm fully on board with 3D printing rocket engines, small rocket components, things that are extremely delicate and hard to do manually. But when it comes to these large scale, massive structural components of the rocket, these giant fuel tanks, I do have to question whether it's actually worth it to 3D print these components. As you can see from this video, an extremely thin strand of aluminum is fed into the Stargate, heated up to the melting point and placed in the right position in order to slowly build the structure. I'm not an engineer, but to me at least, this doesn't seem to be a very fast or efficient way to build a metal cylinder. I understand that there's a benefit to not having any welds in the structure, but this seems to be an overly complex and slow way of going about building these tanks. Printing leaves behind added bumps on the surface of the rocket, increasing its mass by about five to 10%. It only adds an extra uh, 5 to 10 percent of the mass with the roughness. When you actually cross-section the material and look at the machine parts of it, it looks like normal metal. Like actually at this end, uh, this is printed as well, we just machine it afterwards. So it looks like normal metal in the joint sections. Does the surface roughness cause any aerodynamic problems? No, none at all. Now that may not sound like very much, but when it comes to rockets, every pound matters. Every additional pound of weight of your rocket is one pound less of payload that you can launch into orbit. Now I'm not going to go into a huge amount of detail on these rockets because I plan to make future videos on each of them, dedicated videos. But I will say, first of all, Terran 1 is scheduled to launch pretty much any day now, and I do wish them luck on their first ever launch. I know a lot of companies struggle with their first launch, it's a massive milestone for the company, so good luck to them on that launch. In my opinion though, the real make or break for this company on whether it's substance or just hype is going to be the Terran R rocket, which is their next generation second rocket. This vehicle is planned to be fully reusable, including the second stage, which is a feat that even the Neutron is not attempting to accomplish. Fully reusable rockets have been called the holy grail of the space industry. It is the thing that will drive down launch costs in the future 10 to even 100 fold. Without full reusability, any dreams of setting up colonies outside of the Earth will remain unviable. SpaceX is all still attempting to achieve this holy grail. They are building a massive 100 ton to orbit behemoth to make the physics work. Relativity, as a small newcomer, somehow plans to be able to accomplish the same feat with a rocket that can handle just one fifth of the mass. Whether they'll be able to do this remains to be seen. But to put this in perspective, they have yet to launch anything at all into orbit. They have only around 800 employees, and they're attempting something that has never been achieved before in the entire history of the space industry. Heck, even just getting a fully expendable rocket into orbit is an extremely difficult challenge. Even though Relativity has not yet launched a single rocket into orbit, they already have a massive $1.2 billion contract with OneWeb to help launch their satellite constellation into orbit. In addition, they also have prominent contracts with NASA, Iridium, and the Department of Defense. So zooming out, we have some potentially extremely interesting technology around 3D printing and AI. We also have some potentially exciting rockets, but nothing has been proven. They haven't launched a single thing into orbit, but they, on the other hand, do already have some very massive and high profile contracts signed, assuming they can get these rockets working properly. So how do you value a company in this situation? Well, according to the private markets, the last time they raised capital, it was at a valuation of $4.2 billion. However, Fidelity, which is a large investor in Relativity, recently slashed their own valuation of the company given current market conditions. This would value them at about $3.18 billion. To put this in perspective, the market cap of Rocket Lab is now just $2.7 billion. And that's after significant price gains 
over the past couple months. Meanwhile, Rocket Lab has 26 successful launches under their belt, as well as an extremely important manufacturing and components division, which allows them to offer complete vertical integration to customers. So does Relativity deserve this lofty value that it's being given on the private markets? Well, in my opinion, no, it's a little too pricey for my taste. However, I will say that the Terran R rocket is extremely interesting and I do want to follow it closely in the future. If they really can pull off all the promises they've made, it is definitely gonna be one hell of a rocket. If the company is successful and goes public one day, it's very possible that the share price will drop to a level that I will find appealing. So it's definitely a company I plan to keep my eye on. Now, the other thing that's interesting about Relativity is that Tim Ellis also has some pretty lofty and admirable aspirations. Let's hear from him on why he decided to start this rocket company. I founded the company because I really thought that there needed to be you know, dozens of hundreds of companies making Mars happen. We're focused on taking this 3D printing tech and what we call the factory of the future and one day shrinking it down to something we'll actually launch to Mars and build an industrial base. So that's the, the long-term vision of the company is build the industrial base on Mars. In many ways, this factory is just a prototype. It's still far smaller than a traditional factory. It's far lighter. And I think it's inevitable someone has to build this company. I also think you know, going to Mars and, and the first people that are going, it really is about what, what is the point of being a human being? Like for me, why go to Mars is if we were having this conversation and a million people were living on another planet, I think it would expand the possibilities of human experience and what it means to be a person. Like we'd, we'd have YouTube channels on Mars and people sharing what life on Mars is like versus Earth and there'd be long distance Amelie, like love story. Like I think there's just <laughs> a lot of richness in, in what human culture and society can be about. For me it's pretty existential what it means to be a human being. So even though I think the company is too expensive right now and not worth that $3.3 billion, I am cheering for Tim Ellis' success. I think he's really trying to push the space industry forward. Space is extremely hard, and I always hope everyone will succeed, and competition is great for the industry. Even though I am an investor of Rocket Lab, I still like to see the industry improve and move forward. If you made it to the end of the video, thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe down below to help out the channel. We also have a Discord link in the description below if you'd like to join our Discord community.